joining us on Happy Hour. Our guest on the show today needs absolutely no introduction. We've been trying to get him on the show for a lot of time, for several months now, and finally he's agreed to take out the time today. Well, what do you really say about him? Whether it's uh, driving excellence in a company which is a textile titan, whether it's his passion for cars or sailing, or whether it's those the big dashes that he's so very famous for, he's truly the complete man. You might have already guessed it by, na by now. We're, yes, very much talking about Mr. Gautam Singhania, Chairman and Managing Director at Raymond. Thanks very much, Mr. Singhania, for joining us this evening. Kazam, let me get this out of the way before we actually get to the business part of the interview. I've been buying Raymonds for all my life. I keep hearing the phrase worsted suiting. I know I bought them. I have no idea what a worsted suiting is. What is the meaning of the word worsted? Well, it's a technical word and I think it's the way we produce the suiting. There are hmm. different ways to produce suiting. Hmm. The different systems for spinning. We do worsted spinning. Okay. Uh, it's most of our uh, business is polyester wool. Hmm. And it's done on the worsted system, therefore it, I think generally called worsted suiting. So it's fair enough to say it's a good quality suiting? Well, I think as far as suitings go, the best suitings are worsted suitings globally. So Excellent. this spinning system and this uh, way of making clothes uh, or way of making fabrics is really the finest way to do it for formal wear. So, so now you feel more informed when you dress absolutely. up for the evening I now know yeah? that I've been, ever since I stitched my first suit, I've been going down the right road. Very good, you're on track. But you know, speaking of the right road or the wrong road, uh, Gautam, we have so much to talk to you about, of course, about the company, the textile business, but you also represent India Inc. You represent aspirations, you re represent sort of the new faces, the new age uh, of Indian industry as we know it right now. You know, 2007, a lot was happening. India was a toast of town, I mean the toast of the world really, 9% growth, 10% growth and suddenly something changed, it changed all around the world. But what we really want to know and understand is, how do you feel right now as a member of industry, as a person who is doing business today, how difficult uh, has life become or how has your day-to-day -day working changed or your thinking changed in the last one year? Well, I think uh, if you look at the markets specifically, I think a lot of the sentiment is driven from the stock market. So if you were really involved in the stock markets or playing the stock markets or are deeply connected with the stock markets, I think you actually feel much, much worse with companies that were not connected with the stock market. So I think there's always been a temptation for companies to play in the market, but we stayed away from that. So we don't feel as bad as uh, what a few other my friends do feel. Uh, having said that, I think business is tough. It's the global environment has changed dramatically. Uh, what's happened since September 15th is something which is, uh, I don't think anybody really imagined it. And I think anybody who says, I told you so, I'm not willing to believe because it's just been one bad news after another, another. I think the real challenge is keeping your head out of the water, focusing on your business. Uh, there's obviously good things that have happened out of this. I think there's been a strong convergence to brands. Uh, people who would buy maybe three suits and are now switching down to two suits are really going for the brands that they trust. So from that point of view, I think stronger brands are getting stronger and weaker brands are getting weaker. So I think there in itself lies an opportunity. You know, uh, Gautam, let me ask you this. Since you became chairman, uh, you've written out uh, two downturns yourself. Uh, since you've been part of the corporate world, you've written out many more. Do you get a sense that this is worse than the ones you've dealt with previously because you've dealt with enough of them or is there some element of hype? What is the on-ground situation that you sense? <coughs> I feel that the, the, there is a bit of a hype where people are making it out to be worse than it actually is. I think there are different types of sectors that have got to hit differently. I think uh, sectors that were surviving on credit where money has dried up, whether it's automobile or housing, has got affected very, very differently from a commodity sector, which had overinflated. Sure. But having said that, there are sectors which are doing well even today. Whether you take FMCG or textiles is reasonably okay. And even if you see the, the papers today, automobile is bouncing back. Hmm. Uh, so that, I think it's a mixed basket. Depends on which which part of the basket you look at. It could either be very badly in the red or it could be in the black. So what's the biggest concern for you right now? The fact that demand isn't uh, you know, as fast moving as it perhaps what it used to be in 2007-2008 or is it uh, you know, the sheer difficulty in doing business? Maybe not at Raymond but overall as you, as you look at industry, interest rates were going through the roof and you know, uh, there was a choking of credit in between. I think it's just sentiment. I think it's pure sentiment. I was talking to a banker the other day and he says, my boys who are working keep coming and asking will I have a job. And when you have a, a fear in your mind that am I going to have a job tomorrow, you tend to then save a lot more and say, let me not spend because if I do lose my job, I don't know where 
my next meal is going to come from or I, I need to save up for that eventuality. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a huge amount of insecurity in people where people say, you know, let's just be conservative, let's write this out. Mm. Whoever you speak to, they say, you know, this is not the time to, to splurge because we don't know what the next six months is going to look like. I think also, you know, bad news fuels bad news. So when the, the mood is down and the sentiment is down, people tend to go more into a shell. So, uh, you know, people are affected by the stock market in cities like Bombay, but uh, the number of people as a percentage of India that are invested in the stock market is very, very little. That's mm-hmm. true. So we get affected because we live in Bombay, but if you go into deeper India, in, uh, you know, South India, etc., those markets are doing very well. Mm-hmm. They're not. They're not really interested in what's happening in the stock market because they've never been affected by it. Fair enough. You know. Yet, given the situation where in there seem to be some sort of bright spots, interest rates are well on their way down. Uh, for the business that you're in, and you're looking at retailing one-on-one to the individual consumer, for retail floor space that at some point had crossed even a lakh a square foot in certain cities in Bombay is now down from there. Is this something that you get the feeling you can take advantage of already or in the very near future? Certainly, I think uh, with the, I mean, if you're going to do business and you, you're doing it for the right reasons, I think there's going to be a lot of space available at the right price where it makes economic sense. And obviously, if it does make economic sense, we will go for it. No, but that's also a tough call because on, on one hand, there is uh, the prospects of slower demand and on the other side, there is this lucrative opportunity of having space available at a far more affordable price now than uh, a year back. So how do you take that call? Well, I think the slow demand is, depends on which sector you're looking at. I think in our sector, it's reasonably okay. Mm-hmm. Like I explained to you, there's a convergence to a stronger brand. So Raymond brand is actually becoming stronger and stronger because people are saying, sure, too, if I'm going to buy only one suit, let me just go to Raymond because I trust it. Okay, well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. The textile business, the company, the history, the legacy. And, of course, the Indian textile dream, where really has it gone from 2005 when Kothas actually went out of the window? We'll discuss that with Mr. Sanghani on the other side. So, Mr. Singhane, before we get to Raymond the company and, you know, how the business is going right now, I just want to understand a very basic question and I've always sort of asked this whenever you meet, you know, a person like Mr. Singhane, that is it a boon or a bane to be born in a well-established, well-known business family in this country? What's your experience? I guess it's a boon because you were born in a good family and mm-hmm. I think it's a bane because the expectations are very, very high on you, the responsibility is high on you, you're in the public eye. 